everyone, Jennifer here. Today I have a book review for you, um, and it's Goodbye Things by Fumio Sasaki, The New Japanese Minimalism. And this is published by W.W. Norton and Company, and they sent me this book to review, and I'm really excited. I was really excited to read it because, you know me, I love the Marie Kondo books. Um, I write myself a lot about decluttering and minimalism, so I definitely wanted to check out this book, which is written from a male's perspective. So something that we haven't really seen that much on the market lately. Normally it's a lot of women talking about decluttering, and this is this one young man's experience with minimalism in his life. So yes, the book is called Goodbye Things, which I think is a great title. The New Japanese Minimalism. Okay, so his story. So Mr. Sasaki is a single man, he's a young man, and he grew up and had, he was just in this culture that we live in right now, all of us, the consumerism culture where you are constantly wanting more things, constantly buying more things, bringing more things into the home, totally overloaded in all senses of the word. And but he felt extremely unfulfilled and just very bogged down with his stuff. So he goes on this journey of minimalism in his life and it really changed the way he lived his life. So the back of the book says, Fumio Sasaki is not an enlightened minimalism expert. He's just a regular guy who is stressed at work, insecure, and constantly comparing himself to others until one day he decided to change his life by reducing his possessions to the bare minimum. The benefits were instantaneous and absolutely remarkable. Without all his stuff, Sasaki finally felt true freedom, peace of mind, and appreciation for the present moment. So uh, he goes through the book and um, you know, talks about his journey with minimalism. So there are a few things that caught my eye. And he also shows pictures of his closet. It looks like he has a 10 item wardrobe too. <laughs> Maybe less than a 10 item wardrobe. And you know, he has a very decluttered, minimalistic space. And he's just very organized and intentional about the way he lives his life. It also shows the before and after, what his room looked like before and what his room looked like after. Now the book that I'm showing you is an advanced reader copy, so the final book, which is out already, will look different than this, but I just wanted to show you the pictures that I have in my copy. Okay, there were a few things that I noted about the book. So on page 26, he says, uh, his room was filled with all the things he'd taken up as hobbies and then gotten tired of. Because he lost interest in all these hobbies, there was actually never anything that he wanted to do at home. So he would collect hobbies. He would collect things to do. You know, he had books or, and so many people do that. They'll take up an interest in photography or they'll take up an interest in some sort of craft and we will collect all of this stuff. And there's so much stuff around us that we never actually get to it. But then we don't want to throw it away because we think, oh, I spent a lot of money on that and I'm going to eventually get to it. He realized that he had so much that he wasn't actually getting to anything. Now this really reminded me, and I put a note in my margin, that it reminds me of the overstuffed playroom for kids. So, so many people have a playroom for their children or if they don't, they'll have um, toys in the child's bedroom or in the living room. And we just tend to put all the toys out, just all the time, just constantly have all of the toys out. There's just so much and it's so overwhelming that you'll find the children don't play with anything and then they end up playing with, you know, something from the kitchen instead <laughs> or complaining that they're bored. So it really reminded me of that when he wrote that he had too many hobbies and too many supplies out in his room. What I like to do with my children is rotate their toys. So I will take many of their toys and just put them away pack them away totally and bring out a few certain toys and I'll find that they will just play with those because it's not overwhelming. There's not, there's only like one choice <laughs> or two choices. So that's what they choose to do. So that really reminded me um, of that. He really talks about how we covet what other people have and how that's just so not helpful. Coveting what other people have. Why do we do that? Why do we want what other people have when we already have so much ourselves? There's a few quotes in the book 
And one of the quotes uh, was from Francois de la Rochefoucauld, who says, we are more interested in making others believe we are happy than in trying to be happy ourselves. I'm going to read that one again. We are more interested in making others believe we are happy than in trying to be happy ourselves. Isn't that so true? With Facebook and social media and everything, we're just constantly like, look at me, I'm having an amazing time at this restaurant eating this food and oh, look at my house and what I have and what I own and we're so busy trying to share it and show people how fabulous we are and how what a great life we have that we're not actually living that great life that we say we are. And I found that to be interesting because many of the concepts that he writes about in this book um, are about intangible things as well, like what the clutter that goes uh, along with that. So I thought that that was a very interesting point. He also has a section in here called A Day in My Life as a Minimalist, where he shows what he does now. He compares that to what he used to do when he was a maximalist, as he calls it. So I underlined, since I got rid of my TV, I read a book or write instead. And that's funny because that's sort of the journey that I'm going on right now where we still have a TV but I just don't watch it at all right now. I'm just not watching any television. I have decluttered my uh, downtime I guess you could say where I just am right now I'm just going inward. I'm more focused on reading books, playing the piano, that sort of thing. And I know that you know, this is a phase, things will go in and out, I'll probably find a show that I get really into and watch that again, um, but I found it very interesting to read about his, his new life as a minimalist and what he does on a daily basis. Something else, now this is further down the line in the book, and a lot of his advice aligns with a lot of my advice as well, and he talks about finding a unique uniform. So, you know, really decluttering clothes, figuring out your true style. So you can call it a uniform, and I've called it a uniform before, but I think that that kind of puts some people off. Maybe they had to wear a uniform to school and are still traumatized by that or something. But truly, if you find a uniform, and by that, that just means find your true style and buy those clothes. Don't try to dress for other people, trying to wear things that, um, you know, the trendy people are wearing. Find what works for you. You know, I love dresses. I love dresses, cardigans, flat shoes, that type of thing. That's pretty much my uniform on a daily basis. So he writes about having a uniform as well. So he talks about the many rewards of living a minimalistic life. And uh, one of the rewards is cleaning up becomes three times easier when you have less. And that is so true. When you take out all the stuff, you are not managing the stuff. We have so many things, and if you think about it, you just, every single thing you bring into your home, that's going to be time for you. You're going to have to manage that by either putting it back where it belongs, or dusting it, or looking after it, or taking care of it. So the less you bring into your home, truly, the less that you have to clean it, which is a very valid point. So this is another great book along the lines of the Marie Kondo Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up book. Uh, from a male's perspective that can definitely offer motivation for decluttering. I will say two things. Um, there is a quote in here that has a swear word in it, so I just wanted to say that in case any younger readers were wanting to read the book. And there is, um, you know, one reference to um, sort of an adult issue. So <laughs> there's those, those are the two caveats for this book. Uh, that I did want to say. Otherwise, I think it's a good motivational book to declutter your home and to hear this young man's perspective uh, from Japan. If you read Goodbye Things, let me know what you think of it. And today I would love to know about your minimalism journey. Do you suffer from having too many things? Do you have too much clutter in your house? Do you want to get rid of it? Do you have a minimalist lifestyle? Do you feel the freedom that it has of just freeing up your time, freeing up your energy, and just freeing you from the constant wanting of things. That's a big one for me. I would love to hear from you. Please leave your comment down below and your comment could be chosen as comment of the week on The Daily Connoisseur. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.